Snow White, Part 2. In the morning Snow White told them all her story, and they pitied her, and said if she would keep all things in order, and cook and wash, and knit, and spin for them, she might stay where she was, and they would take good care of her. Then they went out all day long to their work, seeking for gold and silver in the mountains, and Snow White remained at home, and they warned her, saying, The Queen will soon find out where you are, so take care, and let no one in but the Queen. Now that she thought Snow White was dead, believe that she was certainly the handsomest lady in the land, so she went to her glass, and said, Tell me, glass, tell me true. Of all the ladies in the land, who is fairest? Tell me who? And the glass answered, Thou, queen, thou art fairest in all this land. But over the hills, in the greenwood shade, where the seven dwarfs their dwelling have made, there Snow White is hiding. And she is lovelier far, O oh queen, than thee. Then the queen was very much alarmed, for she knew that the glass always spoke the truth, and she was sure that the servant had betrayed her. And as she could not bear to think that anyone lived who was more beautiful than she was, she disguised herself as an old peddler woman, and went her way over the hills to the place where the dwarfs dwelt. Then she knocked at the door and cried, Fine wares to sell. Snow White looked out of the window, and said, Good day, good woman, what have you to sell? Good wares, fine wares, replied she, laces and bobbins of all colors. I will let the old lady in, she seems to be a very good sort of a body, thought Snow White, so she ran down, and unbolted the door. Bless me, said the woman, how badly your stays are laced. Let me lace them up with one of my nice new laces. Snow White did not dream of any mischief, so she stood up before the old woman, who set to work so nimbly, and pulled the lace so tightly that Snow White lost her breath, and fell down as if she were dead. There's an end of all thy beauty, said the spiteful queen, and went away home. In the evening the seven dwarfs returned, and I need not say how grieved they were to see their faithful Snow White stretched upon the ground motionless, as if she were quite dead. However, they lifted her up, and when they found what was the matter, they cut the lace, and in a little time she began to breathe, and soon came to herself again. Then they said, The old woman was the queen, take care another time, and let no one in when we are away. When the queen got home, she went to her glass, and spoke to it, but to her surprise it replied in the same words, as before. Then the blood ran cold in her heart with spite and malice to hear, that Snow White still lived, and she dressed herself up again in a disguise, but very different from the one she wore before, and took with her a poison comb. When she reached the dwarf's cottage, she knocked at the door, and cried, fine wares to sell. But Snow White said, I dare not let anyone in then the queen said, only look at my beautiful combs, and gave her the poisoned one. And it looked so pretty that the little girl took it up and put it into her hair, to try it, but the moment it touched her head the poison was so powerful that she fell down senseless. There you may lay, said the queen, and went her way. But by good luck the dwarfs returned very early that evening. And when they saw Snow White lying on the ground, they thought what had happened, and soon found the poison comb. And when they took it away, she recovered, and told them all that had passed, and they warned her once more not to open the door to anyone. Meantime the queen went home to her glass, and trembled with rage when she received exactly the same answer as before, and she said, Snow White shall die, if it costs me my life. So she went secretly into a chamber, and prepared a poisoned apple the outside looked very rosy and tempting. But whosoever tasted it was sure to die. Then she dressed herself up as a peasant's wife, and traveled over the hills to the dwarf's cottage, and knocked at the door 
but Snow White put her head out of the window and said, I dare not let anyone in, for the dwarfs have told me not to. Do as you please, said the old woman, but at any rate take this pretty apple, I will make you a present of it. No, said Snow White, I dare not take it. You silly girl. And sir the other, what are you afraid of? Do you think it is poisoned? Come. Do you eat one part, and I will eat the other. Now the apple was so prepared, that one side was good, though the other side was poisoned. Then Snow White was very much tempted to taste, for the apple looked exceedingly nice, and when she saw the old woman eat, she could refrain no longer. But she had scarcely put the piece into her mouth, when she fell down dead upon the ground. This time nothing will save thee, said the queen, and she went home to her glass, and at last it said thou, queen, art the fairest of all the fair. And then her envious heart was glad, and as happy as such a heart could be, 